Hello everyone, this is the LEGO Ninjago City Docks set. It's inspired by the LEGO Ninjago movie and intended to complement or even be connected directly to the original LEGO Ninjago City set. The, the main one, the huge set. This one doesn't have quite as many pieces as that, but it is very comparable in its level of detail, possibly even surpassing it when you get down to some of the minutia of the builds themselves. This took, I don't know, it felt like it took longer for its overall size and, and bulk than the Ninjago City, the original one, did. And I'm very impressed by the fact, right from the start, that this looks really good from both major sides. The, the original set, you know, the big one kind of looks good from from a couple of angles, but then you look at it from around the back and it's definitely not as good. This one almost feels like it could be displayed from any angle. This one is built on a full 32 by 32 base plate plus a half of that again. So in total it's 48 by 32. The actual docks are right here. And once again, they use quite a number of the trans light blue tile pieces underneath with uh, with plates beneath them as well to represent the water surface and they use black to give you the greatest depth and as you get closer to the shore they start to take you over to some lighter colors and also bring in some greens under there to show kind of you know some of the, the plant life and algae and such near the shore that's a sticker right there pretty much every decoration that you're going to see in this set is done with a sticker this includes two large sticker sheets there's a little little crane over here which can be turned around uses a convenient little right angle triangle there and all of these barrel elements that you'll see actually have stuff in them so this one has a couple of gems of different colors and further back all of these are actually on a little plate sub-assembly to allow you to take them all out at the same time. That's actually a skull in there, a minifig skull from a skeleton minifig, so you can kind of make up your own story behind that. This is just a single beverage, just one. I think it's supposed to be a barrel full of a bunch of them, and the final one just has four cookies, and those actually are the printed pieces that we're familiar with already. Now behind there is actually kind of a shop or at least a workshop and it's the most hidden away space in this whole build looking at it from the other side it is a sculptor's workshop they have a lego vitruvius man sticker up on the wall you've got what's supposed to be a representation of a sculpture that's being made or perhaps it's just a sculpture of a, a skeleton if you want it to be but these other gray things are supposed to represent sculptures that are already done or just, you know, pottery work that can be purchased from here. So you get a couple of micro figs, a couple of chickens, and there's just kind of a traditional small shrine build back there as well. You can pull that out, but by default, it's kind of buried in there. Continuing along the ground level at the waterfront, here's a big turkey on a rotisserie. You can actually get that to rotate just by turning this knob off to the side. It's an existing turkey. Uh, assembly and you can remove the legs from there if you want to just make a small purchase and this is part of just a small kind of market front so they also have some fresh fruit for sale here it's interesting that the sticker to represent the the bin for the bananas shows red bananas on there don't know the significance of that but this has a small action feature built into it with that small dark tan lever off to the side you can hit this and these will all just sp just spill out i'm not going to do it right now but that would make all those things just fall onto the ground and into the water and all the way over is just a little cove it's kind of a bit of hollowed out terrain so you can see inside of there it's almost like a small cave but that is something you can consider to be a tunnel or just a spot to park a boat so this is all just a boat that can represent like a water taxi or something it has a printed uh, a compass piece on the top and it kind of has a trunk has a space that you can open up and in there they have a couple more of those collectible trading cards that are just stickers on one by two tiles and since I'm just focusing on the lowermost level, let me just continue that on around to the opposite side where you see the back of the kind of cave feature there. A little bit different 
design work done. You, you'll see a lot of experimental uh, design work to try to bring in some different textures and shapes with the the, uh, the slats there and the dark red. Also uh, the kind of scroll sided uh, flourish element with the one by one brick in brown. They used a few of those there. Just some some you know nice looking designs. Uh, a couple more signs over here on the side but you know there's not a whole lot going on back here but there is definitely nice detailing and some space to put additional figures back here and you can of course imagine this to be additional stream space or just you know river or even possibly going up to another whole surface of, of ocean back there so it's it's done pretty well when you get up to this next level you see still more different detailing styles with a lot of, of uh, studs on the side construction there for the lower half of this building unit and around here it now becomes time to get inside because this is uh, a, very, a very small version of Grand Sensei Dareth's Mojo Dojo and it looks pretty similar from the outside but pretty small it's such a small space it's of course a little bit difficult to see in there but again you could pose up at least a couple of figures i would say probably three would work out all right so you can have two students who are practicing together and then have dareth in there and they've got some weapons up on the wall there some weapons up on the wall there pretty much the same thing again with the the double scabbard and just a couple of shurikens on the side you got the manuscript up on the wall at the back and if i can rotate this all the way around there's a look from the inside facing towards the front door the main entrance with a lot more decorations on the wall including a couple of trophies and a couple of black and white photographs with everything put back let's just continue on up this staircase here since we're on this part of the structure always a bunch of signs you know advertisements and such on the outside i'll take you around to the other side of the structure as well but an interesting different build here just you know getting another interesting shape we've got a couple of angled parts here that are basically at 45 degree angles just just for the sake of, of interesting build techniques and again texture this is one of those signs like they had in the the first ninjago uh, city set so you can pull out an individual one lock it into place with just a simple lock here and they have additional ones that you can replace that with and those are hidden under here actually between the two levels there's something that you can push from the other side to Bring these out and here are the options there's one of them with the breaking news this is an advertisement for a car and an advertisement for uh, an adventure possibly you can call this number for a special adventure and an advertisement for the uh, sushi restaurant that's in the other set as we come around the other side, there are a couple more small advertisement signs. This is the thing that you push to get the extra signs to come out from the other side. It just has an axle that goes through and just pushes them in. You get the uh, cool drinks vendor, a little dispenser here, which is, I believe, uh, inspired by or based on one that they did for power miners. But unlike the one they did for power miners, uh, this one actually works. I believe it was power miners, but this one actually works. You put a 100 unit bill in there upside down or right side up doesn't matter it's just a one by two tile or any one by two tile you could also put a whole bar of gold in there if you want but you push that in and it's just going to knock one single uh, little can out and you get three of those in there in total and that's pretty much it for the exterior of this but i'll go ahead and show you the roof before i take the roof off this is using the black colored uh well these pieces have been used for a bunch of things in the past they've been used for chutes for cement trucks they've been used for wings for cars but they're used to good effect here and the interesting thing about this build for the roof is that most of it is upside down so <laughs> this whole thing really is built upside down uh, the vast majority of it with a little bit of studs on the side con uh, construction but you see all of these are actually inverted slopes here and you're looking at the undersides of them that's done pretty nicely and they've got one of those balloons up top this one was much easier to build this one represents a, a pig but it was much easier to put together 
uh, in my experience, than the puffer fish that they did from the previous set. This one just, I don't know, just goes together more easily, but still has that same uh, you know, high level of visual punch. And uh, let me go ahead and take this off. It just comes straight off with no connections. You know, there are no studs there. And again, you're now looking at the, uh, the top of this. So that's how that was really built. This unit here is an arcade. It's a little bit difficult to see that from here, but you would have an attendant who works back there. You've got a couple signs on the wall, fairly large ones, the two by three tiles with stickers. And then they have just two arcade game cabinets. Those are difficult to see from here, but fortunately they are designed to come out fairly easily. So you have those two plus a gumball machine. I'll go ahead and pull the gumball machine out just right now. That's a fairly small build, but uh, I appreciate smaller builds because they scale a little bit better to the minifigures, but these arcade cabinets are of a little bit more interest. Uh, very compact build, highly reliant on stickers. Junk bot the game here, but I like these. You know, it's a smart design to fit into a small space. And the other one has a little bit different design with its control scheme. There's what that looks like on the side. And of course, you can translate these out using the standard Ninjago alphabet. And this one just has the, the single control stick there. And I actually like that really, really retro style uh, sticker just there. But these are, you know, pretty much identical in overall size. There's the floor plan as viewed from the top, so you can have a figure at each of the arcade cabinets and then a, an attendant figure back here and then one other person can kind of be roaming around and that's about it. The next structure over is actually a housing unit and I found this one to be uh, arguably the most interesting, at least to build, to me. And it feels the most complete as well of all the the structure builds here, all the units. This does use two completely different styles of roof with a more plain style over here with just the most basic techniques for the most part uh, for the edge, but then you have the much more beautiful rounded shapes for this more traditional design up here. Uses a couple of different uh, types of pieces. These have the double clips on them. They're kind of like the, the sign pieces or uh, uh, flag pieces, whereas these up here are similar to the computer screens that Lego uses frequently with just a single clip in the center. And yeah, this just looks very complete to me. I'll go ahead and get around to the other side before I start opening things up. You know, it's, it's just really interesting with smaller details uh, you know, some of the finer things, good uses of parts, and interesting, just interesting design work from a high level. So kind of all the levels of detail work out well. It's difficult to get access to this as a, as a human, you know, to get figures in there and everything. It's just a very narrow access point from there. But fortunately, the roof will come off and the entire unit can just be pulled off as one. And again, this just reinforces my feeling of how complete this is as its own structure. You know, this really could live by itself without any modifications whatsoever. Just an interesting thought there. But go ahead and pull off the entire upper roof assembly, which is easy to do. Just has a few studs. And then this part just rotates out. So they've got a double bunk bed there including a small ladder on one side. And you can actually remove the top one very easily. It's just sat down in there. So that allows you to get access to the lower level. And there's just a small table off to the side. And they've got a kitchen with a fair amount of detail in there, including you know, the, the stove and the sink and a little bit of cupboard there, you know, just lower level cabinets and even a TV on the side. So for the small amount of space that's included here, there's a, a good amount of stuff in it and you, know, you can have uh, at least a couple of figures that actually live in this space. This isn't the greatest use of space here, but it's important for the exterior shape. So I'm definitely okay with that. You know, it doesn't look so great from here with the, the connection uh, that's, that's used for it. But I think that was pretty smart to put in something with a very different shape. Appreciates the roundness that they try to bring in to break up 
a lot of the rectangular shaping but yeah this is this is nice it's a sticker up above and uh, that's it for this one let's move on as I put this back I do want to let you know that there's nothing to be seen inside of here there's nothing behind this this market front it's completely empty in there and uh, I may not have pointed out previously if you didn't notice it already these here these pieces used for this kind of awning overhang those are shovels lots of shovels in black and you're just seeing the actual shovel heads here facing down nice technique as we get to the last structure there's one unit here and one unit up above we'll start from this level again you have the sliding rice paper door there in the narrow alley this one has a balcony overlooking the waterfront complete with a telescope here uh, whoever inhabits this space is very familiar with and interested in exploration. This is referred to as a map room, and one of the large maps on the wall is of the island of Mata Nui from Bionicle, complete with the Bionicle alphabet uh, used for the, the signage on that. I have a small Ninjago movie related map over here just on the countertop. There's a sextant that is on a stand. There's another map on the wall over here, the island of Ninjago itself. There's a sticker showing a picture of Destiny's bounty actually in the water. They have a globe here which strangely shows Earth, which doesn't make sense because this is supposed to be in the universe of Ninjago and Earth is very different if it even exists at all. And the book that's stored in there has another trading card, but this one is not from Ninjago at all. This one is actually from Atlantis. And that's just it for this very small unit. Now we'll move up to the top level. This one is very nicely adorned from the outside and really stands out. does use some additional stickers, uh, some similar building techniques for the roof to what we saw on the previous Ninjago City set. There's a large window on one side that allows you to get some light in there. You can actually see some of the stuff that's going on from the outside. And there's some additional signage from out here. So this is intended to look like it can be accessed from multiple directions. And you get more advertisements there. The sign, if you didn't see it from the other side, showing the, uh, n the days since the last attack from Garmadon. And this is a small newsstand out front. It has the Ninja Gon uh, exclusive print for the <laughs> newspapers there. And this is what one of those looks like in full. With this place's roof removed, there you can see it is actually Mistake's tea shop with all of the, the uh, you know, drawers for all the different herbs back there. And some of them are open, represented with the hinged parts, which gives just a little bit of open space in there, a little bit of hollowed out space. I think that's a good technique that looks pretty proper, but this is just a very, very limited space. So you can just barely put a figure behind the, the counter there, just barely. And then that just leaves you enough room for maybe two figures to stand in here at maximum as, uh, you know, as customers or one comfortably. And this also has just some additional newspapers. Let's spend some time looking at the minifigures. On the left, of course, is Lloyd in full green ninja garb. In the center is Dareth in Ninjago movie uh, form. And then on the right is just a casual Cole. And I love the torso print for him, as well as just how well the, the hip print works for him. They also got printed legs there, but just the torso and the hip uh, parts go together very well with their printing and he has a, a long existing print there for the phone in his hand looking at these around the back great print for the back of Dareth of course we get alternate faces for the ninja none for Dareth unfortunately but the best surprise here to me uh, the most welcome feature is the inclusion of a hairpiece for Lloyd I want to see that done much more frequently here on the left we have Betsy with her baby, so the two of those can scream out Garmadon in succession. Uh, in the center is Chad from the high school of uh, uh, Boo Lloyd song fame. And on the right is a character named Chan Kong Sang. And I don't know his story, but that's a, 
uh, a cool outfit that he has at least that would be I think very useful for creating some uh, 70s kung fu movie uh, students you know just generalists or even somebody in particular if you like do get alternate faces for all of these fortunately here we have three family members from left to right. I'm probably not going to pronounce this correctly, but I believe it's Runde, Runme, and Runje. It's R-U-N-D-E, R-U-N-M-E, and R-U-N-J-E. Uh, looking at them left to right. Uh, on the far left is the explorer character. In the center is the, uh, the, the statue maker, you know, the sculptor. And on the right is a fisher woman. And the, the extra piece that's added on there on the right allows you to hold a pole with a bunch of fish that have been caught. That works out really well. A very good, effective, good-looking build that fortunately will actually work with the figures. And notice the figure in the center also has the uh, uh, rubber kind of lipstick piece that's been remade in just a plain black color. That's useful. It's representing a chisel here. And only one of these three gets an alternate face. Here we have Miss Take and Lil Nelson, who is now part of the Wu crew. He's got the official uh, gi on, so that's cool to see. He has an injury right now, but that may heal up, and he may lose that cast on his wrist. I really like the torso print for Miss Take, but you do only get single-faced heads with these two. And finally, these are the only two bad guys in the set, but one of them is the baddest of them all, Lord Garmadon, of course. The other one is Private Puffer by name. Uh, I, I think he would be a Private Puffer. I think there would be more than one uh, unit that's, that's set up like that, but he's got the orange-colored pufferfish head and also the removable air tank, so not integrated in with the headpiece at all. And there's those from the backs. Once again, no alternate faces between the two, and I did want to show you the less obscured view of that torso print on the right. Now the original Ninjago City set and this dock set present completely differently from one another. It's staggering how much larger this appears, how much more visual weight this has when you display the two next to each other or together. They are of course intended to be brought right together like this. Everything is designed to be smooth with the transitions, the walkways continue you know, right along so that all works properly, but it feels like there's so much more here just to look at it. And yet, building these two, I don't feel like there's that much difference in how much actually went into them. There's a fair uh, you know, delta in number of parts between the two, but there's still a lot of time commitment involved here. There's a lot of great design work, and it just feels to me, having actually built this, that I got almost as much into this amount of space as I did over here with this much taller build. You can also connect the two this way, which introduces an interesting possibility. You can go ahead and get yourself a second whole <laughs> Ninjago City set and have one here have this as just a center section and then have another one at the corner. You could even get four of these, have four corners, have four of those as in between pieces, give yourself an additional base plate in the center just for, for water and create an entire large city block. You'd have a lot of similarities <laughs> that would be pretty obvious, but it is something that can be done. They, they do you know, attach in these different ways. Things do line up well enough from around the backs as well, although the dock set just looks so much more complete back here because this is really a space where they've, they've built it out for the minifigures to interact quite a lot, whereas on the original set it was more like a back alley space. And finally here's the other swap option, and I think this flows together the most smoothly, and again things still are able to connect properly with the walkways and such. It's kind of unfair just how small this looks compared to the previous set because it makes it look like it's nowhere near as good of a deal. This is still an expensive set. You know, it's still well over $200 in the US and uh, the price to part ratio is still very good. But 
just from looking at it from the outside, it just doesn't feel fair to me at all. Because I put a lot of hours into assembling this, and I, like I talked, like I said before, uh, I really felt like the value was there as I assembled it. I felt like there was a whole lot of work that went into not only designing this, but just gathering together the pieces. And, and if you haven't built it, yeah, it's just very difficult just to visually justify it. That's it for my look at this set though. If you made it this far without skipping too much, well, congratulations and thank you very much. I will talk to you again as soon as I can. <laughs>